Many people feel that Genshin has a problem, the filler patches. I feel the same frustrations but don't entirely agree. It's pretty common for people to point to the floods of money pouring into Genshin, the unbelievable profit margins Hoyo are seeing on any investment they make into the game, and the fairly typical size of their team by AAA standards, and make the obvious conclusion that they could solve this problem by hiring more people. Sadly, it's not that simple. Let's take a look at why people feel this way, whether it's actually something Hoyo should invest time into, and think through some potential solutions, including the obvious one which might not work. First, what is a filler patch and why do people care? Essentially, a filler patch is one which feels like it doesn't have much content, a stark contrast to a major patch, such as the release of a new nation, which comes with tons of content of many types. What counts as a filler patch is very subjective, and each person has their own perspective, which usually boils down to one thing, which part of Genshin they really care about. Let's start with the people who play the game for the story. For those who focus on this most intensely, any patch which does not move the traveler's story forwards or provide juicy lore drops feels a little pointless, just an empty side quest which is there to waste our time until the next part of the real story is released. When viewed from this perspective, even patches with a lot of content can feel like filler, since usually there's only a handful of patches in each major version which feature new chapters in the Archon quest. While it's valid to feel that way, most of the people who play the game for the story are a little less strict than that. For a lot of story-focused people, interludes and major events are the next tier of story content and would be the minimum expectation for a patch to avoid being considered filler. Interludes and major events tend to include significant lore or story moments even if they aren't quite the same as the main Archon quests in terms of moving the narrative forwards. The rest is even more subjective. What's left are story quests, character hangouts, and smaller story-focused events like the Thelxie's fantastic adventures. Everyone will have their own unique perspective on which of these were good enough to lift the patch from filler to minor. The next group of people play for the joy of exploration. Again, there are few different levels to people's perspective on this. The major patches for exploration are any which include an expansion to the overworld or a new permanent map like Enconomia or the Chasm. Of course, these aren't all of equal size, but there's a pretty clear line dividing patches which have a new map from patches which don't. However, there are a couple of exceptions here which can still divide the exploration in joyous. First, the summer event. Genshin summer events so far have included a new region for us to explore, but these regions are only available temporarily. Their content tends to be skewed a little more towards mini-games and novelty rather than pure exploration, so some do consider them to be filler from an exploration perspective. Perspective, but it's much more common for exploration lovers to count them as pretty good patches. And then there's the rarer type of exploration content, revisiting an existing area. The second summer event arguably falls into this category, but the best example is the Three Realms Gateway Offering event from version 2.5. This was a limited time event which took over the Enconomia map and required players to revisit the area to explore it again. Since these are areas we have already explored, only a subset of explorers feel the same rush when revisiting them. And then there's the combat in Joyous. This group has had the short end of the stick because so far the game has not introduced any combat related endgame content since launch, and for those who just want to focus on that, it's pretty slim pickings. For many of these, all patches might feel like they're mostly filler, distracting them from the lack of substance to the game in the only dimension they care about. For some people in this category, the temporary combat events can at least fill the void a little, though their difficulty bar is often set too low and they are often far too short to keep these players engaged for long. Some also take solace in the releases of new characters or combat mechanics. The most significant update for combat so far was the introduction of Dendro, which opened up a whole new V-star of unexplored potential, but of course that was a one-time thing. However, Hoya does regularly release new combat mechanics to keep things fresh, new bosses, enemies with unusual strengths or weaknesses, and so on. A well-designed new character can also unlock new playstyles and create new teams, which can be very fun to explore and experiment with. This is very inconsistent, and since the only difficult combat for endgame-focused players is the Abyss, even the patches which bring the most variety tend to feel like filler for them. 
While there are many people who fall squarely into one of those categories, I expect most people will not be here exclusively for one type of gameplay. Most people like a mix, and their own unique combination of preferences for the different categories will strongly influence which patches feel exciting to them, and which feel empty in comparison. Plus, there are other types of players who I haven't even mentioned, TCG players or teapot mains to give two examples. And of course, preferences can change over time. At first, what got me hooked was exploration, with combat coming in second, with the store in a very distant last place. But Sumeru Desert expansions burnt out my enthusiasm for exploration, and while Fontaine and Chen Yu Vale have rekindled it a bit, it hasn't regained that top spot. These days, I honestly prefer combat and experimenting with teams first, with exploration in second place. Plus, the story has grown on me a ton, so that's no longer quite so far behind. I always enjoy the festival events, and find the combat events particularly fun, so for the most part, I've been pretty happy. The only patches which feel like filler were the few which only had a handful of small events and maybe a story quest. So yes, judging by the trailer, 4.5 does seem like it will be a perfect example of filler. But I don't really mind filler patches since they give me space to breathe and chance to catch up a little. The festivals are another point where people differ a ton. Hoyo clearly pour a lot of effort into them, and while may still find them delightful, some are tired of them and would prefer something different. It's also worth noting, for the vast majority of people, quality of life improvements do not count towards whether a patch is considered filler, but most will be much more forgiving of lighter patches when they come with some important new systems. I'd happily trade an entire version's worth of content for true artifact loadouts, for example. So, is this actually a problem? For casual players, absolutely not. Someone who has played casually from the start will probably have completed all the content, but even then, if you pace yourself, it's pretty easy to spread out any patch's content to provide maybe a half an hour of entertainment every day, which is more than enough for many people. For any casual player who started more recently, it can take years to catch up. And based on Hoyo's behavior, I would expect this to be the vast majority of players. For many semi-serious players, it's still not really a problem. They'll notice the ebb and flow of content, but that cycle of anticipation and reward, feast and famine, can actually make those times where we do get a ton of new stuff feel even more special. For many, it's actually quite nice to not have a new everything every patch. New regions would feel less special if they were released every six weeks, and of course, if Hoyo were constantly releasing content, many less dedicated people would get overwhelmed or even burn out and stop playing. But for the real hardcore players who want to play the game all the time, it's absolutely a problem. For this section of the community, that feast and famine cycle is painful. The game comes to life for a brief period, and you get to experience your love for it once again. But it quickly dies down as the content runs out, and it feels like you're stood alone in an empty concert hall after everyone's gone home. I still feel both ways when thinking about it from that perspective. After all, with Genshin not being able to take up all your time, it does open up space for other games and other hobbies. I do feel like a lot of this sentiment comes from some vocal subset of the community who get a lot of attention by saying that they're sick of Genshin and will no longer play it, but who keep coming back. However, there are some very legitimate complaints here, and I think even if this is only a small section of the player base, these complaints are ones Hoyo should absolutely fix. So how can we fix this, and what are some reasons they might be holding back? Unfortunately, hiring new developers is not a solution. This is commonly known in the software industry, though unfortunately management doesn't always get the memo. Adding new programmers to a software project almost always makes it take longer. The new people have to learn about the project before they can contribute, and any time the existing team spends helping them learn is time taken away from productive work. This happens even for smaller teams. Worse, with every person added to the team, you increase the lines of communication exponentially so it takes extra work to keep everyone synchronized and working in the right direction. Once your team reaches a certain size, this extra overhead exceeds the productivity added by the new programmer, and any more people added to the project actively make it take longer to complete. Sadly, Hoyo can't just double the size of their team and produce double the content. It just doesn't work like that. Slow and steady wins the race when it comes to growing a team. But what can they do? 
The highest priority for me would be something which lets us use the combat system, strategize and experiment with new teams, and really put our builds through their paces. I've really enjoyed some of the different takes on team building restrictions in fighting events, and they'll have a ton of stats on what works for people from those experiments. A roguelike mode inspired by the Labyrinth Warriors from way back in 2.2 would be a good starting point, especially if it included some creative mechanics. Even better if it was also playable in co-op. And seriously, let us increase the overworld level to match or even exceed the difficulty of the abyss. It would be nice if even doing your dailies could be a challenge if you want one. Another really perplexing one is that they haven't made the Divine Ingenuity event permanent. It's an event which has run twice, in version 2.5 and 3.7, which lets players create their own custom domains and share and play through them together. The possibilities for this were absolutely fantastic, and I saw some incredible domains, including some which required two players in co-op to collaborate together to solve puzzles, something which doesn't exist anywhere else in the game. Having this available at all times could really scratch that part of the exploration itch for those of us who just want to solve puzzles. I remember this being mentioned as a possibility in the developer discussion a while back, so hopefully this will happen soon. Similarly, for exploration lovers, I wish they'd continue with the approach in that Enconomia event in 2.5 and revitalize overworld areas every now and then with some new exploration rewards. This is a little less likely, since it would require Hoya to develop some new twist each time so that it doesn't feel really stale to people who have thoroughly explored each area, but when done right, it's a viable alternative to releasing completely new regions which would still keep people engaged. The one area where I honestly don't want more frequent content is the story. Part of this is that my main complaint with the quests is that they're often bloated, and this would inevitably get worse if they tried to increase their story output. I don't really see them avoiding that. If the level of quality of the existing story content were to be raised, and possibly more of it could have voice acting, I'd hope things would feel less empty for the story lovers. But honestly, what I'm really hoping for on this point is for other, similar games to appear, with a comparable level of quality which can fill that void while Genshin's story is taking a break. Here's hoping Wuthering Waves is fantastic. And as to why we don't have these things already? First, something some people seem to struggle to comprehend. New regions take years to design, develop, and release, and it's vital that the teams get time to dedicate to the major releases. The games industry is notorious for having awful work-life balance, and frankly, the well-being of the developers is more important than the gratification of the fans. Lighter patches are an essential part of this. Any live service game is always going to have a trade-off between having more impactful releases less frequently versus smaller scale ones more often. And in my opinion, Hoyo has a pretty good balance for the most part. Second, if the game's audience skews towards the casual players, then there's a big problem which is rarely acknowledged. Adding more content aimed at higher level players risks alienating those who would be unable to complete that content. But the solution for that is not to avoid adding that content completely. Instead, the correct approach is to build things which help raise the level of the casual players so that the gap between them and the higher level content is much smaller. I'm hopeful on this point because a lot of Genshin's quality of life upgrades in recent times have been squarely aimed at closing that gap. It's impossible to know what Hoyo's intention is, but the direction of movement is promising, and I'm hopeful that these changes are leading towards the addition of more true endgame content in the future. And unfortunately, it feels like a big reason they don't do a lot of this is to reduce the amount of rewards people get for free. This they can absolutely afford to stop being so stingy on. They honestly could double the rewards they give out for free and see barely any impact on their revenue. With the goodwill from providing lots of content and lots of rewards, it would absolutely mean even more money would pour in, especially if they were to release skins a little more regularly. Plus, the rewards don't have to be primo gems. There are many other things which would motivate people to play the endgame content. Something for artifacts like fuel or an item along the lines of of Honkai Star Rail's self-modeling resin at the top of the list.
This whole discussion always feels particularly stark for Genshin, and I think that's because of the conflict inherent in a game which is at once a live service gacha which relies on constantly extracting revenue from its players, and also an ambitious open world exploration RPG with a dynamic real-time combat system and a story spanning the best part of a decade. I fall into the category of people who are mostly happy with what we've been getting and use the quieter patches to catch up on the stuff I haven't had time to do so far. But even then, I'd love to see some more evergreen content to keep us engaged and entertained while Hoya cook up the next major update. Let's just hope they're working on it. Until next time!